Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of UBS Road to the Election and Election Watch series. I'm thrilled to welcome today's guest, Bill Cass, Director of Wealth Planning at Franklin Templeton. Bill, good to have you here on the show. Great to be here, Anthony. One of the, one of the topics, Bill, that has been really important to our clients and to our advisors are, of course, with the election come the potential tax implications. We know that the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, which was uh, put into action 2017, is set to expire at the end Correct. of next year. Everybody's wondering whoever's sitting in the White House or how the Congress is made up might impact that. So what are the potential scenarios you see playing out, especially when it comes to those tax implications? Sure. Well, this is a really challenging time for taxpayers because you've got these two huge factors going on at the same time, right? You have the uncertainty around the elections, obviously, and then you have the scheduled expiration of just about every individual tax provision out there. Mm -hmm. So we really have three different scenarios, right? One is we see the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act get extended for some period of time. Second, we see it expire, and we sort of go back to the, the world we had prior to the 2017 law. And then the third scenario is we see it's a, it's a mixed bag, something in between. Hmm. Some things get extended, some things expire. We see, could see other changes. What's interesting about this all is that, you know, we've certainly all gotten used to the way it is since 2017. Right. You know, it's easy to forget what it was before. But, you know, tax brackets went down. Um, the amount that you can uh, claim for your lifetime estate planning, you know, exactly. gift exemptions increased exponentially. That could all go back down to, you know, I think it's $7 million for an individual versus like $23 million today. So what, what does that mean? Like, what are the implications then for that? It, and since like... What could impact these scenarios? Sure. Well, obviously, we're looking at the election. Right. That's, that's sort of our next big marker, right? So if we look at the election results, so let's just hypothetically say there's a Republican suite. Republican in the White House. Republicans control Congress. Number, one of their biggest priorities is going to be they're going to want to extend the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. It's, it's in their best interest that, at this point, right? It is in their best interest. Yeah. And that, that's, that's, if it's not job one, it's job 1A mm -hmm. of, what, of what they're going to try to get done. Uh, so then conversely, if we see the Democrats sweep, right, and they have control, mm -hmm. um, then we're going to see higher taxes likely for those at the higher tax brackets, higher wealth levels. You know, President Biden in his budget has sort of uh, put out this, this, this line in the sand at higher taxes at $400,000 for individuals, four hundred and fifty dollars for married couples. Right. N He'll, have to, he'll obviously, obviously have to pass that through Congress, but that, that's sort of the marker. Uh, and then I think they'd look to raise the corporate tax rate as well, amongst other provisions. You, and then if we, see, if we see sort of like, you know, maybe Republican in the White House, Democrats hold the House, with something in between, then there's going to be a negotiating that's going to happen. Which always leads... And that's going to get really interesting. Exactly. Yeah. And I was just going to say, I'm reiterating your words, whenever there's a bipartisan kind of bill that's hitting, you know, Congress... There's both sides of the aisle trying to make their, you know, provisions, right. and we want this, and you want this, and it almost feels like it's at the expense of the American public and the American right. taxpayers. So do you think that a bipartisan support, that, that we could get bipartisan support right. for not letting those things expire in sunset? Yeah, even in a, an environment, a political environment, where bipartisan support is sort of an oxymoron these days, <laughs> yeah, right, Anthony? That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do think there's elements of the tax code that's going to have support from whether you're Republican or Democrat. There's, mm -hmm. a, there's a few areas. So I guess I'd be surprised if the tax cuts and job just expires as scheduled. Right. I think there's going to be some impetus on the, on the side of both, both the types of lawmakers to get something done in, in at least a few areas. For example, if you look at the second lowest tax bracket today, it's 15%. It's, 10, it's 12%, actually. It, it is scheduled to go to 15%. 15%. I don't think there's any lawmaker on either side of the aisle that's going to want to see that happen. Of course. We have AMT today that's hardly an issue with individuals. Maybe a couple hundred thousand uh, taxpayers are subject to alternative minimum tax today. That's going to go back up to six or seven million. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a, there's, a, there's others as well, but I think there's some at least some common ground where, depending on the election results, lawmakers are going to look at this and say, "Listen, we we at least have to address these these items because I, I just don't see it's not going to look good if the if folks in the second lowest tax bracket have a tax hike. That's not going to look good." Which is probably the majority of most Congress men and women's 
constituents. They're sorry in that sure. demographic, right? You Absolutely. look at the demographic retirees, of the United, right? Exactly, right. The United States. Whether they're young workers supporting families or retirees, right? It's in right. their best. But then you take the flip side of that, and the wealthiest Americans, their tax bracket goes from thirty-seven percent to thirty-nine. 0.6 if it expires, which right. at the amount of money we're talking about, that is a significant increase year over year. So those people, the higher earning folks, they right. could be really impacted pretty significantly and, as well. Anthony, it's actually a worse than that. If you just look at the thresholds I talked about before, so this is in the this was in the Biden budget that was released a few months ago. Okay, so looking at a higher tax rates, 39.6 at 400 for individuals. 450 for married couples. Mm -hmm. That actually takes folks from the 35% bracket to 39.6. Wow. And 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 a little bit of the 32% bracket for married couples up to 39.6. So yes, yes, you're going from 37 to 39.6 on the highest end. But it, it, at those income levels, you're actually going down a, a bracket or so. Right. So yeah, it's even a little worse than that. The ranges adjust to lower tax brackets from right. previous to higher numbers that they're paying. Right, not to be the bearer of bad news for these taxpayers, right. but that's, you know, th on paper, that's what it looks like right now. And who knows, that being said, we don't know what's gonna happen. Exactly, right? exactly. Right. I mean, at this point in the story, as we're sitting here, there's so much uncertainty surrounding right. the US election and, you know, I, both candidates, it's like the polls will come out, they're, they're pretty much 50-50. And, right. you know, at UBS at this point, our team expects a divided Congress um, mm -hmm. at that point, but this is early on in the game. So it's a whole summer in September and October I, to go here. I keep saying to clients in my travels that we're in the very early innings of a nine inning baseball game. Yeah. And there might be a couple rain delays in there too. So yeah. we'll see how it plays and out. And maybe some extra innings in past <laughs> maybe, performances. Maybe, God forbid extra innings. Yes, yes. Well, that's you right. Know. So here's the big question then for you, Bill. For investors, clients, Basically, anybody in any tax bracket range, sure. what are some things they could be doing today to you know, try and offset sure. some of these tax potential hikes or implications that are coming if this does sunset? Sure. I think first on the income tax side, I think what at least, at least higher income folks would mm -hmm. want to do, I would take an inventory of your investable assets right now, and I would divide them into three different buckets. Taxable bucket, so... CDs, brokerage accounts, stocks, bond, those mutual funds, uh, tax deferred, so traditional retirement, your 401k, your IRA. And then do you have anything in that tax-free bucket? Mm. So HSAs, Roth accounts, maybe even munis. And I think that's your starting point to see how sort of diversified or not you are. And then uh, that is a starting point. Maybe it makes sense to take some money from your traditional retirement and do partial Roth conversions. Being mindful of your tax bracket, right? If I'm in the highest tax bracket, I'm not necessarily going to go crazy with Roth conversions and just pay a lot of taxes today. But there might be opportunities within the tax bracket um, regime to sort of fill up, fill up uh, brackets by adding income on a yearly basis. Right. There's, there's other types of strategies. We have a thing called a backdoor Roth and a mega backdoor Roth. You talk, to, you know, you want to talk to your financial advisor about those <laughs> strategies. Uh, but that's where my starting point would be on the income tax side, because if you think about it, it's really you're hedging the risk of higher taxes in the future. Are you diversified, using that diversification mm. sort of theory to, to hedge that risk? And, and the other thing I've been telling clients is that we might dodge a bullet, or taxpayers might dodge a bullet this time around, but I just think it's inevitable at some point we're going to face higher taxes if you look at Social Security, Medicare, the debt, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Five years down the line, 10 years, et cetera. I think we had to, we, I think reasonably we have to prepare for a higher tax rate environment. And something we've, we've also talked about in this show and others is don't wait until the last no. minute because everybody in your advisor's book is going to be doing the same thing and waiting till like a month before everything expires. Start having those conversations today. And that's, that's a real good segue into the estate tax, right? right? For the higher, the higher net worth folks, ultra high net worth families, today they can shelter, uh, you know, over 13 million of their net worth, right, while they're living or, or at death. That's right. right. 26, 26 million for, for a couple. 27 million for a couple. Now that's that's scheduled to go uh, to be cut in half. So, but we don't know that that's going to happen. So yes, you could pursue an aggressive gifting strategy today. If you think that's going to happen, but number one, you're losing control of those assets. Mm -hmm. You can't have it both ways, right? And number two, generally, if you're going to do gifting, let's say into an irrevocable trust, for example, 
down the road, when that individual passes away, those assets are not going to benefit from step up in cost basis. Mm -hmm. So you could have a scenario where people gift aggressively today and, and use irrevocable trust and other types of techniques. And then they realize Congress comes to some deal, they don't change the numbers, there's some negotiation, and they really didn't need to do that. And now they've lost control, and then they've lost step up in cost basis. So I think, I think it warrants a, an in-depth conversation with an estate planning professional now, as you said, don't wait to the to third or fourth quarter of 2025. That's right. Right? Maybe at least have a plan, and maybe can you build in some flexibility to that plan based on what con what it looks like, what Congress is or isn't going to do with that plan. Right, exactly. Because at this point, again, we don't know. Although right. we did say it is in their best interest to make sure that this doesn't sunset or some version of it, but it could all expire. But at least you'd be prepared if it did happen. Yeah, and on the estate tax side, we went through a similar scenario back in 2012, mm -hmm. right, where the, the lifetime exclusion amount was, was going to be reduced. There was a bipartisan deal that raised the estate tax rate but kept the exclusion amount the same. Mm. So I don't know what's going to happen. I right. wish I did. It'd be much easier conversation to have with clients, <laughs> Anthony, for all of us. But I think th that getting out, thinking, and having conversations with professionals Financial, your, your financial advisor is paramount. Absolutely. Bill, thank you very much. I'm too bad we don't have that crystal ball, right, that we could just <laughs> see the future. I forgot today. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> Next time, bring it in with yes, you. Yes, absolutely. Bill Cass from Franklin Templeton. Thank you so much, Bill. Thanks. And uh, great advice from Bill. Again, don't forget that if you do have questions about this, you should be talking to your financial advisor, but also make sure to be talking to your tax professional that you have, whether it's your CPA or accountant. So, you know, those two sides of the house, they and your financial advisor can work together for you to make sure that you have everything you need to prepare for whatever might happen. So that's going to do it for this conversation. Thank you all again for being here. Don't forget to check out more content at our website, ubs.com forward slash election watch. Lots of content there, including other episodes in this series. And in the meantime, everybody, don't forget, if you have any questions, call your financial advisor. Until next time, I'm Anthony Pastore. Have a great day. See you soon. Thank you.